Welcome back. This is Sharon Bornholt with another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing. My guest today is Shannon Garuli. Shannon is the founder of The Brassy Boss, and we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is branding. Real estate investors have a tough time with this. So I'm hoping to... Um, uh, hoping that we can get some tips together to help uh, you folks work on your branding. So welcome, Shannon. Thank you for having me. Okay, so why don't we start out, Shannon, by having you tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm Shannon Garule, and I am the founder and owner of TheBrassyBoss.co. And what I do, I'm a web designer as well as a life and business coach. And I help women start their online businesses as well as get their branding up and do all of their web design. And I just really love it. I work with women in helping them you know, redesign anything that's going on with their branding. And that's how you and I met Sharon and you were trying to, you know, redesign everything on your website and go with a different direction with your brand and everything. So that's what I do. I really love it. And she does a great job. And um, I think most of us, we spend too much time trying to do it ourselves instead of outsourcing things rather than staying with our, what our core, uh, our core geniuses, as some people would say. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's an elusive thing. Real estate investors are a different bunch. They think their business is just about buying houses. So when you, when you talk about really building a business and building a brand, I tell what I tell my students is that uh, marketing is how you get leads, but branding is why they choose you. So right. branding is really important. So, mm -hmm. From, for someone who's just starting out and they, they don't really know how to start, what, what do you tell your students? That, what's the first step? So for me, I'd like to say, you know, I agree with you. I don't think it's just the real estate um, industry. I think it's so many industries where like people just don't under, really, really understand that branding and web design is a form of visual communication, mm -hmm. right? You're communicating something with everything that's going on with your colors, with your logo, with your website layout, everything that you're doing on there. And what it's doing is you're communicating two things, right? Who your ideal client is mm -hmm. and also, you know, what your purpose is and your mission. And I kind of like to call it like your personal, personal mission statement about your business and your brand. So all of those things are really important, but it often gets overlooked. So I often see clients going one way or the other, right, to two mm -hmm. extremes where they spend way too much time trying to dig into the nitty gritty details of all of that, or they don't spend enough time, right? So like the entire point is to get in and get hit the mark on what you're trying to convey about your message and your brand and your overall mission and your ideal clients and who you're trying to attract. Um, but also be able to meet that point where it's everything that you are hoping for, like you personally want out of your brand and, and your mission and everything. So I don't think that it is uh, one way or the other. Like you don't need to spend mm -hmm. so much time digging into the details and you don't need to spend like no time doing anything, like just overlooking it and <laughs> trying to get it a template up on and this is no dig to anybody who has this right now but you know like Wix and things like that mm -hmm. um, are really template based and they're not very personal to you so and they're kind of hard to control and hard to change and evolve as your brand evolves so the very first thing that I want people to do is get very comfortable in finding out you know what your personal mission statement is and whether or not your brand is truthfully conveying what you want it to if it's communicating to the right people. Yeah, it's, uh, I think uh, the visual part of it for me is important because um, I'm picky about that. But the visual component of your brand is just that. It's just the visual component. At the core, I think people, they need to know who their ide ideal customer is and who they want to attract because you're going to be mighty miserable attracting a lot of people you're not meant to work with. Yeah. And been there and done that one, and you probably have too. So yeah. I, and on the flip side, you may lose out on clients that you do want to like, like you'll lose out on some of the best clients, or you will find yourself struggling to um, command the right pricing, command premium pricing and what you are worth, because they will be like, well, I wasn't really getting that from, you know, what your website was looking like. And you know, it didn't seem like you were a premium or you established yourself as an expert in your area. Yeah, and that, that is so true. You cannot attract premium clients with a 
startup Wix website. It mm -hmm. is not going to happen. And I, yeah. I had that conversation with somebody just yesterday. You know, Wix is good for some, for it has its place in this world. But if you intend to build a business, a real business where one day you intend to have uh, the top of the line clients, then you, you need everything about you. Your, your brand is the way you show up in every form. Mm -hmm. So do you think, I don't know, I'm a big proponent of uh, hiring someone to do what you can't do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, if you don't know how to yeah. do it yourself. Yeah. But if you are looking to, um, you know, if you do have to bootstrap it yourself or learn how to do it yourself, or whatever way you need to, because you are on a budget, then you need to take the right courses. That's what I would advise. Like you need to learn mm -hmm. from the right people how to do branding and web design like on a, a premium level at a lower cost. So that's what I would suggest mm -hmm. as well. Because yep. let's face it, we all started there. Everybody, mm -hmm. everybody starts there and not everybody has the, the website skills. Now I started right out the gate with WordPress. It's, it's what I feel is easiest. I think it's easiest to use and you can certainly mm -hmm. uh, scale up from there on the fancier websites like you do, like Divi and, and, and the, the ones that are so nice that you can do all the layouts with, but you don't have to start there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would say, you know, starting with WordPress Universe. and and any sort of, um, you know, builder, it doesn't have to be Divi. You know, there are different types of builders that will have like page builders, but mm -hmm. I think that WordPress gets sort of a bad rap um, in comparison to sites like Wix and Squarespace where it seems like template-based, but... WordPress, you actually have the opportunity to be more, um, to, you know, have more control over what you want your website mm -hmm. to look like. And you don't need to know how to code anymore, thankfully, no. in WordPress. You do not need to know how to do that in order to build a premium website anymore. So I think people don't know that. And it, when, another thing to consider is you have to have, uh, not all websites uh, will allow you to sell things on them. Yeah. So WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. And now you may be thinking today you don't, you're never going to sell something, but that's probably going to change if you're in any business long enough. One day you're going to have something to sell and you're just really out of luck if your website doesn't allow that. Yeah, you will have to move to a different platform. Mm -hmm. um, Squarespace is kind of starting to catch up a little bit with things like that, but um, like with Wix and you will just have a really hard time building an online store. So what you mm -hmm. will end up doing is spending more money down the line because you will not be able to keep things in-house. So now you're going to be dealing with um, fees that are associated with third-party platforms if you want to integrate that with your business as well as transaction fees mm -hmm. where normally you can cut down on a lot of those things when you have built it yourself within your own WordPress site. So. Right. So do you, I know you were going to talk about your services in a little bit, but do you still help people with their websites? Is that still part of your services now? Yeah, yeah. When people reach out to me and they want to um, really have a redo a brand or have a premium brand, I'm absolutely happy to work with you in that capacity. I actually will make time. I like to call myself a renaissance woman. So <laughs> I want to stay up with all of those skills. And I really want to spend a lot of time um, being creative because it helps me in other areas of my business. Mm -hmm. So um, if people want to do anything with um, rebranding or doing anything with building a WordPress website or having a logo made, they can definitely reach out to me at hey at the brassy boss.co. Yeah, and I, and I love that that hey at the brassy boss. Yeah. That's just super <laughs> hip and super cool. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> let's talk Thank about you. social media a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, I love social media. It's uh, it's changed so much, even in like five years. And I, I know mm -hmm. you have a presence on Facebook Lives. Um, I I do a lot of different things. But in your in your mind, if you are an entrepreneur in most any business, what do you think the most important channels are for an entrepreneur? Um, I don't. As much as we have been seeing a lot of things, obviously in the news lately about Facebook, um, it's not going away no. until there is some sort of other platform that can take its place. It is not going away, and I'm actually seeing how they're expanding now into because you know Facebook owns Instagram, and now they're expanding into Instagram TV, mm -hmm. and so um, Facebook and Instagram are probably the two number one social media platforms that you need to be on to try and reach 
any clients. So um, there's more people. I think they, I just read an article that said there's 300 million people in the world who use Instagram alone. So um, where Facebook is a little bit different is that you really have to go out and find your tar your ideal clients mm -hmm. on Facebook. So you're going to have to spend more time joining groups and all of that. It's mm -hmm. not going to be something where you put up your Facebook page and your clients are just going to find you because it's a, a different demographic that you uses Facebook and so you need to get out there and really work to find groups and build a relationship and build a brand for yourself on that but Instagram just with like a hashtag you are going to reach ideal clients because they are searching for you if they're looking at certain hashtags or you're popping up on feeds consistently so different thing different things yes yeah. kind of the same thing with face uh, with uh, Google and YouTube so mm -hmm. uh, when people are, let's say if you're a blogger and you're doing, you know, anything at all, if you can stick a video on there, your, your written word is going to have a lot more weight than, than yeah. one without a video. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a combination, but in my world, I've Facebook and now Instagram, I think are the two big ones, you know, not so much Google plus if you're a professional, certainly mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, and I do feed all my blog posts over to LinkedIn and I get mm -hmm. a lot of comments, but is it really my platform? I don't, yeah. I don't think yeah. it really is, but yeah. I'm not going to waste that share button. Right, right, exactly. You kind of, you need to, it really starts with finding your ideal client, right, and knowing where they are on a consistent basis and being able to make contact with them every single day. So consistency is probably the biggest thing when it comes to social media. It's something that I even struggle with. If you're a solopreneur and you're by like doing this all on your own, just expect that you are going to struggle a little bit in the beginning, um, but it's worth it if you're able to provide that personal touch. Um, the other place where I would suggest people start exploring, even though it gets the, um, it has a reputation of being a social media platform, but it's really not. It's actually a search engine is Pinterest. Mm -hmm. So this, I really feel like is an untouched market by a lot of people. But if you have a blog that you run for part of your real estate business, or you do video in any way, mm -hmm. and you can connect it back to your Pinterest account, mm -hmm. that is a really great way to reach people. I mean, think about all of the men and women who put Pinterest accounts up there mm -hmm. and are just pinning things for like redoing their house or, you know, selling their house or just learning about real estate or how to save money to buy their first home or mm -hmm. things like that. Like there's a lot, a big market out there on Pinterest. So learning how to use it is probably a big thing too. Yeah, I do. I do use Pinterest too. And I'm never really sure if it's valuable or not, but I, I do, you know, I have boards up there and I'm, I really have been the, the beauty of with the, the blog and WordPress now is that you can have the social media share button. So it's, it's just so easy to do it. And then I use a uh, smarter Q, which mm -hmm. was, you know, kind of like meet Edgar. Mm -hmm. so I love that too, because if you create any kind of content and you, you put it and build a library in smart with smarter Q, which is mm -hmm. like 25 bucks a month or something. Mm -hmm. I always tell people if you're, if your smarter Q is hooked to a credit card or something that, doesn't expire for a long time. You could be dead and you, you're still posting out of your library like forever mm -hmm. because it just lives on. Yep. Yeah. I would say um, with, you know, using uh, social media management tools for certainly you want to find something that you can just put out there and it will do kind of all of the work for you and you don't need to it doesn't take a lot of hands-on management with it and with sites like Pinterest it is a, like a strategy that you have to right. go in and use and so I think that that's what scares people a lot exactly what you were saying just now whether or not am I seeing any returns on investment as far as Pinterest so in order to do that just for people who are listening today um, you definitely need to to hook that up with some sort of analytical tool. So whether it's Google Analytics, um, one of my favorites is Heap Analytics, H-E-A-P Analytics. Um, so you'll definitely want to hook that up so that you can see whether or not you're getting the traffic to your site from Pinterest. Um, so that's something that you will want to work out with your branding and web design person to make sure that they are able to, you know, integrate those tools. So, so what, what is Heap? I'm not familiar with that. 
So HEAP is very similar. It's an analytical tool, obviously. The data analytics is really going to be huge for your business, and you need to make sure that your web designer knows about this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you take nothing away from this podcast today, um, make sure that your web designer knows how to index your site on Google so that you can be found and you're able to do analytical tools so that you can track things back to see what's going on. But similar to Google Analytics, it will track how many page views you have, it will track your click through rates, so that you can build out your sales funnels mm -hmm. in, a, in a better way in a more strategic way. Now what I like about heap is that you can do it real time versus Google Analytics can be a little difficult to navigate. Yes. It is something that they have been saying themselves that they need to really work on heap is kind of you add the tag to your website the same way that you would with Google Analytics so you can track what's going on. But then once you add the tag, you are able to pull up on your screen in real time and maybe you want to track a link. So you can just click on that link and add it to your sales funnel that way. Okay. So is, it a, is that a paid service? Heap is free, actually. So that is something you definitely want to check out. It's absolutely free. You can build out all sorts of funnels on it. They have a really great library. Of, and this is no, I don't have any affiliation with them. So <laughs> I just really love their tool. I got that in there. Um, they're free and they have a whole library of teaching you how to use that. So nice. Nice. Yeah. It's a good thing my web designer knows about that. <laughs> So when it comes to Instagram, now, if, if you are a rehabber, it's a real simple thing. You mm -hmm. just post beautiful pictures of what you're doing. And I have a, a friend who started out as a student who does beautiful stuff. Um, and she just posts beautiful pictures on there with hashtags. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tougher if you are maybe a buy and hold landlord or you're um, a wholesaler that just finds deals for other people. Mm -hmm. I think I find figuring out a strategy for Instagram other than quotes and just maybe little, maybe video clips or something that gets a little bit tough for us. Yeah. Yeah. Instagram is a really difficult game to navigate. So mm -hmm. my few tips for managing Instagram are number one, um, even though it says Insta in the title, do not do any of your photos on Instagram in the moment. Like yes. it's very rare with that. Um, if you're going to be doing in the moment, kind of try and limit that to doing your Instagram lives or something like that. Um, I would say plan out your Instagram for the week. So you need to make a strategy and a plan for that. The second thing is branding your Instagram the same exact way that you were branding, you know, your website and everything else. So keeping with your color schemes and all of that. And so that's why it's going to be really important for you to plan those things out in advance, knowing what photos you're going to add in to, um, to curate it. So that's what people don't understand about Instagram. It has instant in the title, but really it's a, it's a magazine. It's a curation of events going on in your life. Mm -hmm. So you have to curate those photos and um, you need to make a plan around what are the top three things, maybe one, two, three things that you are consistently going to theme on your website. So it could be quotes. It could be, I'm always like every week going to take a picture of my workspace. It could be, I'm always going to take a picture of a really beautiful home that I've just had staged or something like that along the real estate lines. Mm -hmm. And if you're able to, on a regular basis, bring in colors that are part of your brand theme, then you'll want to do that and plan it out as far enough in advance as you possibly can. And then use a planner, um, a social media tool. One of my favorites is Planoly because you can put your grid together and make sure that everything looks very mm -hmm. succinct beautiful. So those are those Instagram pages where you're like, man, how do they get all the colors to link up and everything just looks so beautiful. So that's one of the tools that you'll definitely want to so, do. So is this similar to later? It is a little similar to later, but I have found with Planoly, um, it's a little bit easier to use than later. So um, it, it later is more like it just posts it and it will send it um, to your website, but you kind of don't have the opportunity to really like plan out your grid. And also if you need to pull in other people within your network, because you know, you can post pictures from other people in your network if they fall within your color scheme or your branding as well. Yeah, and that was something I learned recently that um, I, I was looking at um, 
something on Instagram and there was a grid type of thing where people were rearranging the colors. And so, mm -hmm. and so that, yeah. So where in Facebook you think, well, it happened. I put it on there. That was one big takeaway I had from that, that with Instagram, it was exactly that there was a grid and they were moving things around. And as if yeah. you had a picture frame, the old picture frames where you had all the pictures, what were they called? Mm -hmm. Collages. Yeah. So it kind of reminded you of a collage. So that was mm -hmm. a whole, like a light bulb moment for me. Yeah. Because um, trying to manage all of this is like, kind of like a nightmare. <laughs> it can be, it really <laughs> can be really overwhelming. Really hard. Yeah, you have to consider yourself, you have to kind of turn off that part of your brain that is like, okay, I'm a, I work in real estate, or I'm an investor and all of this and kind of turn on this creative part of your mind that is like, I am a magazine curator, I'm a yeah. photo create curator, like that is what you're doing, you're a photography curator, and you are telling your brand story through Instagram. Yeah, it's a different way of thinking. And I can mm -hmm. totally get lost in uh you know, messing around with graphics and things, which uh, totally I don't have time to do right now, but it's, yeah. it's, it's, I'm all about the pretty. Yeah. So one of the things that you can do to cut down on that is um, as long as you're making sure that you're giving the photo credits to the right people is on sites like Planoly, like I said, they have a um, tab that will allow you to search other um, people all over Instagram who are using hashtags that are in your field. So mm -hmm. if it's like hashtag probate investing, maybe somebody else is doing something like that and um, you can pull in their pictures into your feed. So mm -hmm. it will cut down on a lot of the time. So maybe one or two times a week you help spread somebody else's message as well as well as helping your own Instagram mm -hmm. feed so you can consider things like that well I'll definitely look into that tool yeah. because that um, I've done a little bit with later but um, just really just trying to work the ins the whole Instagram thing into my bigger plan which is yeah and yeah. it's great if you have a business account because what I got into doing with Planoly was because mm -hmm. um, you can auto post with Instagram now if you have a business account. Mm -hmm. So plan out all of your photos if you possibly can for the whole month and just schedule them out and just let Planoly post it for you. Okay, so you don't like later you still have to, it'll say you've got a post and you have to click on it and it will post it out, but it, it sends you a message. So you don't have to do that with Planoly. If you have an Instagram business account, you do not need to do that. If you don't have a business account, you still will have to, you know, post it yourself. They'll send you the message, but that is the reason why I think it is more in your benefit to move to the um, business account. Not just that, but they also have the analytics and everything as part of it if you're on Instagram. So if you have an account now, can you change that account to, okay, so you don't have to start over. Okay. No, nope. there's a button on there. You just have to go into your profile and just click you know, okay. want to change over too. Okay. So let's talk a little bit. I know you do some Facebook lives and uh, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about uh, the advantages of doing Facebook lives. So we've talked about the whole Facebook Instagram mm -hmm. thing. So mm -hmm. you can, uh, you could probably clip out. Is it a minute on Instagram? That's the length of the video. 60 or, seconds. 60 mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. So do I'm trying to think this through on my own. So if you do, if I do, if I do a Facebook live and I clip out the first 60 seconds, mm -hmm. then my link is back to where, because now it's back to my webs, to my website, but it wouldn't it need to go back. Wouldn't that link need to change every time in that post or how does that, yeah. how do they get back to see the whole thing? Um, so in, once you clip out of it on your Facebook and let's say you kind of edit it and you choose what 60 seconds you want, then you'll want to just put in your caption, um, check out my Facebook page, maybe with like a, um, an emoji that like points up to the, um, your website link, but you would change your website link on your Instagram to your Facebook page. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that that makes sense because then if they were on your Facebook page and they wanted to actually read the whole blog post, I guess, or go, then they could go somewhere else. So it's a linking right. strategy. Right. Why don't we do this? It would be really cool if this next week, you know, when we go live with the podcast and all of that, you say like, hey, check out my latest podcast and try it that way and then put a link to, um, you know, either your Facebook live or whatever, whatever you want to put a link to and see right. if that 
works more. Yeah, I think that's it. I've actually got, it's funny you mentioned that because I've actually got that written on a piece of paper too, because I do a lot of linking now, but I know I can be doing a better job of it. it I have so much, for me, I have so much content that mm -hmm. now it's about using it in a better way. Yeah, repurposing yeah. it and yeah, using it more strategically yeah. to drive more for your bottom line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, people are consistently like turning out more and more content, but they forget about the part of repurposing, which mm -hmm. is why sites like Pinterest are really great mm -hmm. um, because that is content that is evergreen, essentially. Mm -hmm. It stays out there for a really long time and it's always driving um, consistent sales to your business. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's great, great tips. So do you have some, any final tips you want to leave folks with, Shannon? Um, you know, I would just say, think more about your branding and the messages you're trying to communicate. Um, I would say get more into social media, but start with finding out where your ideal clients are hanging out. One of the biggest things that trips people out with social media is they think they have to be everywhere at all the time. Mm -hmm. And that is not true at all. You just need to be where your ideal clients are. Excellent. So I know you have a brand new program out today. Um, I can personally tell you I've been working with Shannon for a little while. She's been helping me not lose my mind on this rebrand. So <laughs> she's, she's great. She has, has been a tremendous help to me. And uh, she has a new program out. Uh, in addition to her, her website work and all the other things she can do for you, social media, graphics, things like that. Um, t tell everybody about your new program. Yes, yeah, so my new program is called the Online Fempreneur Program. Um, as you know, I have, you know, part of my Brassy Boss branding is fempreneurs and helping mm -hmm. women start their online businesses. Um, but specifically, this program is for women who are looking to start their online coaching businesses. So um, one of the things I think that holds people back from doing coaching is that they think they need to have certifications and they think they need to spend all this time, you know, doing all these things to build up the fact that they're a coach. And that's absolutely not true at all. If you have the experience and you are able to lead people down a certain path that you have been down for example how you know you are doing business coaching marketing business mm -hmm. coaching for people who are looking to get into real estate investing you have a lot of experience in that that is a great way to you know bring in extra revenue for your business and things mm -hmm. like that so you just need to know how to structure your programs and your courses and set up the right marketing and sales funnels to meet that demand so that's what this program is all about it is an eight-week program um, and it is going to take you from basically having no idea to having an idea to reaching your ideal client to building that website that you love and being able to do all of those things and bring in the right clients and set up the right marketing and sales systems for your online coaching business okay. so that is what it's all about excellent excellent so uh, check it out folks and what's the best way for them to reach you uh, Shannon um, you can either reach me if you have more questions at hey at the .co, or if you have questions regarding or you want to see more about the online fempreneur program, you can just go to courses.thebrassyboss.co. Excellent. Well, Shannon, thanks so much. I knew this was going to be a great you. show and um, uh, I'm sure people are going to love it. And uh, if you all have any questions or need a recommendation from me for, about Shannon, I'm happy to do that. So um that's, that's about it for today. Thanks, Shannon. And thanks Thank to everyone for listening. And I'll be back next week with another episode of Let's Talk Real Estate Investing.